As many of you may already know, I spend a great deal of time in India, Mumbai especially, or at least I did until the pandemic hit. And I think one of the most enduring images that you see on postcards and travel brochures for the city is the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel. And I thought today we might look at the history of this iconic building. Because for well over a century, this world-renowned luxury hotel has stood firm on the banks of the Arabian Sea as one of Mumbai's most famous landmarks. It was built a little over 200 years after the original famous Taj Mahal, you know, the ivory white marble mausoleum in Agra. The Taj Mahal Palace is located in Kalaba, in Mumbai, or Bombay, as it was when I was a child up until 1995. The Taj Mahal Palace first opened its doors in 1903, commonly known as the Taj. Even today, the hotel was commissioned by the legendary industrialist and philanthropist Jamshetty G. Tata, who, according to an often repeated story, was supposedly refused entry into Watson's Hotel, which was the best hotel in Bombay at the time. The story goes that Watson's was reserved for only white Europeans and Tata was refused entry. However, a number of scholars have challenged this narrative, with the historian Charles Allen remarking that Tata took on the British in India over many issues, but racism was not one of them. Rather, it was actually the devastation caused by the bubonic plague which hit Bombay in the 1890s which provided his incentive to build the hotel. His endeavour was in response to an appeal from the editor of the Times of India to build a luxury hotel that was worthy of his beloved city. So in order to restore the city's reputation and to attract international tourists, Tata started the constructions. Now, the cost of the construction at the time was the equivalent of about £130 million today, so quite a, quite a lot of money. Originally, two Indian architects, Sitaram Kandara Vaidya and D. N. Misra, guided the project, although it would eventually be completed by the English engineer W. A. Chambers following Vaidya's death. Chambers did retain nearly all of Vaidya's features, though, there's long been held a rumour that the hotel was built back to front, and depending on who you hear telling it, Vaidya approved the plans, went on holidays, and when he returned and noticed that it was built backwards, he threw himself to his death from the fifth floor, because he was so ashamed. It's not true, though. Tata actually wanted the bedrooms to look over the Arabian Sea, which was quite unusual at the time. The Taj was an immediate hit with international visitors, and when it first opened in December 1903, the hotel was the very first building in India to have electricity, the only one with German elevators, American vans, Turkish baths, and of course British butlers. Later, it would also boast having Bombay's very first licensed bar, the Harbour Bar, which incidentally is still there, as well as the India's first 24-hour restaurant and first discotheque. In 1924, it benefited greatly from the building of the Gateway of India, a 26-metre-high triumphal art monument on the land behind the hotel. The Gateway of India originally was used as a symbolic and ceremonial entrance point for important colonial personnel. It was built for King George's visit, and it soon became a major focal point and attraction in Bombay. The hotel's guest list was originally made up, of course, mostly of European visitors, of Maharajas, and of Indian social elites. During the First World War, it was utilised as a military hospital with 600 beds. And many world-renowned personalities also stayed at the hotel during the 20th century, including Bill Clinton, Lord Mountbatten, and Duke Ellington. The Taj was also home to the legendary jazz musician known as the Sultan of Swing, Mickey Correa from 1936 to 1960. During the 1960s, the hotel went into decline because of a lack of international guests traveling to India. The Taj faced demolition, with the Hilton Hotel's president, Kurt Strand, boldly remarking at the time that it could only remain standing as long as the termites keep holding hands. Nonetheless, it was saved under the leadership of Tata's great nephew, Jahangir Tata, who fought extremely hard to save the building and eventually pulled off what many people called a miracle. 
making it one of the very rare success stories from a time when the Indian economy was in dire straits. During the restoration, a lot of the original Western design was replaced with both traditional and modern Indian arts and crafts, making it a further sense of local pride for Mumbaikas. In 1972, the hotel management was franchised to Pan Am's Intercontinental Hotels Division, and it was renamed the Taj Mahal Intercontinental. The famous and iconic Taj Mahal Tower was opened during the same year as a new wing with a much more modern design. Now, the, the tower does stand in harmonious contrast to the original building, and it doesn't look at all out of place. By 1995, Bombay had now become Mumbai, and the hotel's affiliation with Pan Am ended. And in 2003, at 100 years old, it was renamed the Taj Mahal Palace and Tower. But in 2008, tragedy struck. Over four days, a Pakistani-based terrorist group carried out a dozen attacks across Mumbai. 175 people died in the attacks, including nine attackers, and over 300 people were wounded. One of the attacks specifically targeted the Taj. A total of six explosions were reported in the hotel on the 27th of November 2008. One in the lobby, two in the elevators, and three in the restaurant. 480 people were staying in the hotel at the time, although of course not all of them were present at the time of the attack. That night, firefighters, using ladders, managed to rescue 200 hostages through the hotel's windows. A number of EU and international trade delegates were also staying in the hotel at the time, including Sajad Karim from the UK's Conservative Party, but none of them were injured. Unfortunately, at least 31 people died because of the attack on the Taj that day. The blueprint for the attack itself had been compiled by David Headley, a Pakistani-American, who had previously stayed at the hotel on numerous occasions. Although the less damaged parts of the hotel reopened on the 20 21st of December 2008, it took two more years for the restoration to be fully completed. When Hillary Clinton visited Mumbai to strengthen India-US relations in 2009, she stayed at the hotel, even though it had not yet been fully restored. Eventually, on the 15th of August 2010, India's Independence Day, the hotel would officially be reopened. It now dropped the Tower from its name, again reopening with the original name of the Taj Mahal Palace. Two months after the reopening, Barack Obama became the very first foreign leader to visit the Taj Mahal Palace after the 2008 attacks. Delivering a speech from the hotel's terrace, the US president emphasized the hotel's significance as the symbol of the strength and the resilience of the Indian people. The terrorist attack on the hotel is portrayed in the 2018 movie Hotel Mumbai and it's worth watching, quite harrowing. Recent guests at the hotel include the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, the Prince of Morocco, Oprah Winfrey, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, and Madonna. By 2017, the hotel made further history by becoming the very first building in India to secure intellectual property rights protection for its architectural design. Today, this five-star hotel boasts 560 rooms, 44 suites, and employs more than 1,500 staff. Now, having said all of that, I must tell you that I've stayed in the Taj a number of times, and the Taj Mahal isn't my favorite hotel in Mumbai. I think in many respects it trades on past glory in terms of the service that it provides. Their motto is the guest is God, but they don't live up to that in, in all cases in my experience. I mean, I was there just before the pandemic and I went into the bar in the lobby and I asked for a, for a coffee, but I was told the machine wasn't working. But I was also told that I could go upstairs, order a coffee up there myself and bring it down and drink it in the bar if I wanted to. Now that's not exactly a five-star service, is it? And of course there have been small things like that throughout all of my stays there, which kind of put a dampener on the idea that the guest is God. I will say though that on the flip side of that, the butlers in the bedrooms or on the bedroom floors are excellent, absolutely fantastic. I don't tend to stay in hotels when I'm in Mumbai, though. I usually stay at the Royal Bombay Yacht Club, 
which is literally just across the road from the Taj. Uh, and that's pretty much like stepping back in time about a hundred years. Maybe I'll do a video on that. The, the history of the Royal Bombay Yacht Club is quite fascinating. But there are better hotels in Mumbai if you are going to visit. Of course, it is worthwhile going to visit the Taj Mahal Palace because it's so iconic. And of course, you can even stay a night there. But my own favorite hotel in Mumbai is Sofitel BKC. And, you know, it has always had pretty flawless service on the occasions that I've stayed there. Four Seasons in Morley is another one. Excellent service there. But I think my absolute favorite hotel, though, in Maharashtra is the Conrad in Pune. So if you're ever in Pune, stay in the Conrad. It's absolutely fantastic. So there you go. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. If you did enjoy this video, like it. If you enjoy these kind of videos, then please subscribe to the channel and I will talk to you in the next video.